week was inspired by uh, a young lady that reached out to me through Instagram uh, just over the weekend, quite desperate to get better information because the fertility center she was working with really couldn't help her in the way that she wanted. And she had gone through several cycles of monitoring with ovulation triggers during the monitoring. So this is someone that was making eggs on their own. They weren't PCOS or anything, but they were now being monitored and then they were being triggered for the ovulation and they weren't getting pregnant and they were wondering why. And so I thought, you know, that's kind of interesting because uh, my knowledge of that topic is fairly reasonable and uh, I had a very different opinion from what she was doing. So I thought, you know what, this would be a great fact or fiction. Let's talk about a few different elements of just kind of natural monitoring, natural fertility, triggering your natural cycle versus not triggering, whether insemination really helps in, uh, when you're adding it to simple things like uh, PCOS and so on. So a whole bunch of topics kind of crammed into one um, and kind of reaching a bit of a broader audience because, you know, we know that the focus is frequently on IVF, but it doesn't have to be always on IVF. We can talk about the patients going through insemination, which is actually a larger proportion of you guys. We have a relatively small proportion that are doing IVF and a larger proportion that are doing insemination or IUI. So uh, that was where the topic came from. And so I'll, I'll get right into it. So the, the first one I want to look at is that very topic of whether or not spontaneous triggering of your ovulation, meaning your LH surges, you get a natural boost of the hormone that tells your ovary to release the egg, and then the egg gets released from the ovary by natural means versus actually taking the HCG trigger shot makes a difference. So is it better for us as fertility specialists to monitor your cycle, see where your cycle is going to, and then give you a booster shot of HCG at the time that we think it's optimal, or should we just let your body do what it's naturally going to do and then do the insemination? So the first article is, is actually a few years old. It's from 2012. It's from a fantastic author who's done a lot of amazing research projects in the infertility world. His last name is Kolo Bianakis. It's a Greek group, and the lead author is Kairu. And uh, they actually have an American author in there as well, Paul DeVroy, who's a very well-known American fertility specialist also. So very interesting study. They had about uh, 300 patients all together who were undergoing insemination cycles. And they wanted to look at this and see if letting the patient naturally trigger, meaning their LH surge occurred, like I said earlier, versus monitoring them and then using the injection to help them trigger made a difference. So they split them into two groups. So the first group was basically the group that was being just monitored with an ovulation kit. So these are the kits where you pee on a stick and then it tells you when your ovulation is going to occur. And the second group was the group where they gave them HCG. What's interesting about this study? This study is pretty cool. They did what's called a randomized controlled trial and randomized controlled trials in the infertility world are very few and far between. Essentially what you're doing is getting someone to sign up and agree that without knowing ahead of time which group they're going to be in, they're willing to randomly be assigned to one group or another. And then when they're assigned to that group, they then have to follow through with whatever is prescribed for that group. And that way you eliminate a lot of the biases that can go into research studies where, you know, people think this treatment is better than that treatment, so they all want to go into that treatment so or, or this treatment. So basically, it's a very well done, rigorously controlled study. It eliminates a lot of the biases, and so you get really robust data from this. And the randomized controlled trial is the holy grail of research for everyone doing any kind of procedural or uh, medical pharmaceutical type trial. So basically 150 patients got the HCG shot because they were being monitored. They did ultrasounds on day six and thereafter as necessary. Uh, they monitored uh, the hormones and when they got to this time where the size of the follicle was greater than 17 millimeters, they triggered the release with the HCG shot. And the other group, they just followed them with those urinary LH kits, 
when they hit a surge, they went ahead the next day and they did their insemination. So both groups were getting insemination. The first group was being monitored, then they got the trigger shot, and then they went ahead and did the insemination 36 hours later. The second group just had the ovulation monitoring with the urine, and then when they had the spontaneous surge, they actually went ahead and did the insemination 24 hours later, which is pretty standard for all of us. When we trigger you here, we're gonna give you a 36 hour window and when you spontaneously trigger, cause we're not quite sure about when it's occurring, we actually give you a 24 hour window. They have done studies comparing insemination for patients with 24, 36 and 48 hours and there is no difference between 24 and 36. It's a little bit less when you do 48. Okay, so what did they show? They showed that the ongoing pregnancy rate, so these are fetal heartbeats in a pregnancy, so they're actually seeing live fetuses in there, was almost half when you took the HCG shot than it was when you spontaneously triggered. So if I monitor you and then I decide, hey, her follicle to me looks like it's at the right size, 17, 18 millimeters, and I tell you, hey, run home and do your HCG trigger, that actually is going to reduce your chances of success compared to us just leaving you alone and letting you ovulate naturally where you get a much higher success rate. How much is the difference? It's actually huge. 10.7% pregnancy rate when you did the HCG trigger and 22.7% when you naturally released your egg with doing insemination. That is a very, very substantial difference. Why was this important to me? Because this patient was really getting the wrong treatment at the center she was at. They were bringing her in. She wasn't even doing insemination, but it's the same idea. They were bringing her in they were monitoring her and then saying, oh, your egg looks ready, you should take your trigger shot now. But I knew from having presented this data a long time ago that that actually cuts your chances in half. So we should not be triggering you in the majority of cases when you are just naturally ovulating or naturally going through your cycle. It is a very, very little benefit to you and it may be detrimental based on this data. So typically for us, a lot of people say, well, why aren't they monitoring me? And why am I just using the ovulation kit? So as long as you're regular, you're ovulatory on your own, us monitoring you helps me bill OHIP, but it doesn't help you in any way. In fact, it's detrimental to you. So we don't do it because I only want what's best for you guys. So we do what's best for you guys. So getting monitored, getting triggered, in a natural cycle when you're already making your eggs routinely is not helpful to you. And there's actually other data that suggests the same thing. Even if you're taking Clomid or you're taking uh, letrozole, you can also naturally spontaneously release and that's still okay as well. So when you're gonna be naturally monitored and you already are ovulatory, it is a fiction that an HCG trigger is helpful, it is actually detrimental to you, it cuts your chances in half, you should naturally surge and not have to try and be monitored and go through all that torture. So what about in the other populations where you're doing donor insemination? So this is a more recent study from 2018, sorry, 2017, uh, from a French group in uh, Montreal and they looked at timing therapeutic donor inseminations in natural cycles. Again, whether they should do HCG or urinary LH monitoring. And what they showed was there was actually absolutely no difference whatsoever. And they said that LH monitoring, urinary LH monitoring, is as effective as ultrasound monitoring and ovulation trigger with HCG in the therapeutic donor insemination. So even if you're using donor, there is no benefit to us doing all the monitoring. Well, some people might say, well, is there a disadvantage? There is a disadvantage. You gotta come for a bunch of visits. We gotta keep poking and prodding you with the ultrasound. I don't know if too many people that come in here saying, oh, please let me do another transvaginal ultrasound. So there's the blood draws, there's the ultrasounds, there's all the poking and prodding. And in this day and age where we have to 
pause between patients. We got to clean the room. Everybody's wearing a mask. You got to go through all the crazy screening. We have to point that infrared thermometer at your head and fire the little trigger there. I feel like we're shooting people every time we do that. It, it's probably detrimental. We're increasing your exposure. You can literally stay at home, pee on a stick, which could not be any easier, and end up with the exact same result. It makes no difference. So in this study, they weren't saying it was detrimental, but they were saying it wasn't beneficial to do the HCG trigger. So considering there are some side effects to having to do it with all the monitoring, it's still probably on balance, not particularly helpful for you. So again, is it a fact or a fiction that you need HCG to trigger in a natural cycle when doing insemination? It is a fiction. You do not need to get the HCG trigger if you're already ovulatory. It is not helping you guys. So why is this important for me? Because in Ontario, we do get paid to monitor you by the government if you're just going home to have intercourse. Insemination is a different story. But the outcome of this is still the same. Whether you're getting the sperm from an insem or you're doing it naturally, it's going to give you the same exact outcome in terms of the data and the results. So there are loads of centers that keep bringing the patients back month after month for more natural cycle monitoring. We do monitor everybody for one natural cycle. I need to map out your cycle so I get to know your physiology and I get to know what's going on with you. That is important. But is it important to bring you back three, four, five months in a row? No, it's ridiculous. It's doing absolutely nothing for you except making you late for work, aggravating you and wasting your time. It does not help you when we do that and definitely doesn't help you when you now add in the cost and the pain of having to do HCG shots. So don't do that. If your center is saying come back for several months of natural cycle monitoring, the only reason you should ever do it more than once is if there was something really confusing, they saw a cyst, you didn't make an egg at the right time, uh, or, or it took a really long time, it was an unusual cycle for you, okay, that's justified, come back for one more. But if it's just, hey, we're gonna run you through the, the grinder and just keep bringing you back for the same thing over and over again, useless, don't do it. It's just really good at making us wealthy and really not good at helping you uh, achieve your goals here. So that is not helpful for you guys. So again, that is a fiction. Okay, what about when you're adding in PCOS? Because people always say, well, wait a minute, you're talking about ovulatory women. What about the anovulatory women? Does it help doing it with intrauterine insemination with timed intercourse when you're using clomiphene uh, for PCOS and then again letrozole as well. So in this particular instance, this is kind of interesting. When they looked at this group, what they said was, if you're gonna do insemination after taking Clomid, uh, is it beneficial to take the insemination or is it beneficial to just do in intercourse? So in other words, if you're gonna take Clomid and you're gonna go home and have sex, so now we, you don't need us, we're just sending you home to have intercourse, is that better or should we add in the insemination to improve your success rate? So this is no longer just a monitoring issue, you can still monitor with the LH kit, but what should you do once you are positive with the monitor? Should you just go home and have intercourse or is it better to do insemination? So the interesting thing here was that it's a fairly small study, 147 cycles, and they had uh, 56 with insemination and 91 where they just went home and had timed intercourse where we told you, hey, this looks like it's the right time, go home and have intercourse. And when they looked at these two groups, what they actually showed was that in the group that was doing the insemination, the rate was much higher for clinical pregnancy, 48.2% versus just 11% in the group that went home and had intercourse. So even if you have normal male parameters, your chances of success when you're taking a pill like letrozole or like Clomid and you have polycystic ovarian syndrome are higher when you add in 
the insemination. The same thing is critically true for those of you who have unexplained infertility, and we go through this almost every week on the show. If you have unexplained infertility, the pills alone and intercourse are not helpful. Insemination alone is not helpful, but the pills with insemination, as they did in this study, are definitely helpful, and it makes a huge difference. So is insemination beneficial when you are trying with polycystic ovarian syndrome versus is just timed intercourse, yes, the insemination is actually beneficial. So timed intercourse is not helpful for you. That's where we're doing the HCG trigger and telling you, hey, go home and have sex in 36 hours. It's actually better for you to do the intrauterine insemination. So again, another fiction. It is fiction that doing the timed intercourse is helpful. You are much better off doing an insemination. The last study I wanted to take a look at, and I gotta actually load up another laptop here for it is from the Cochrane database. So the Cochrane database is this huge database where they do these uh, sort of mega meta-analyses and they review very, very large topics very rigorously. And in the Cochrane database, they were actually analyzing the um, various ways that you could actually uh, sort of watch someone in terms of natural cycle monitoring. So whether it was uh, HCG trigger, whether it was temperature monitoring, whether it was a urinary monitor and so on. So the last update to this is kind of old now. Um, and I apologize on behalf of Cochrane for that, but I'm not a member of the Cochrane team. Um, and so what they showed in that was that there was quite a large number of studies that were available to review. And when they whittled, whittled it down to the small amount that was left over, and that definitely always comes down. So um, they start off with like 900 cycles, and then by the time they get down to the actual studies that they say are good, they're down to 18 in this one. So from from the 900 down to 18, they ended up with 18 good studies, and they said at the end of it, there is insufficient evidence to determine whether there is any difference in the safety and effectiveness between any of the different methods of synchronization of ovulation and insemination. So there is probably no difference between any of these different techniques, which means simpler is definitely better and less, you know, sort of difficult for you guys having to bring you and take you and all of that stuff. As well, it's definitely going to be cost effective because you don't have to pay for all the meds and all the drugs and lost time from work and babysitter for the other children and so on. So the simpler we can keep it, the better it would be for you guys. And so that's really the, the mode that you want to go with, which is why that's what we've done for years now, both in our Sarnia location and in our Windsor location. When we give you letrozole or Clomid, we send you home and say, just wait for your ovulation surge. Now, it's true that once you surge, you also want the trigger shot, but that's with your natural surge, which is very different from us monitoring you and making you surge. So that was from our Factor Fiction a couple weeks ago where it showed that if you add in the HCG shot with your natural surge, that's actually beneficial. But making you surge because we think your egg is ready is actually not correct. Your body probably knows way better when it's supposed to release its egg than we can with blood tests and ultrasounds. So that is the factor fiction for this week, or factor fictions, I guess. This was a plural this week, so we uh, tried to bring in a couple of different topics for you guys to ha have exposure to. And I wanted to make sure you guys all knew about these because this poor soul who reached out to me said, you know, I wasted five, six months doing all these spontaneous, uh, or sorry, these monitored cycles, and then I skipped my spontaneous ovulation and made myself ovulate, and that's just not the right thing to do, guys. So you don't need that for your natural cycle unless you're not ovulating even with medication like letrozole. Now, I do want to send out a big warning because everybody's going to go to their fertility specialist tomorrow and say, you know, why did you do this and so on. So keep in mind, they do need to know what's going on with your cycle if you're not regular. In some instances, even after you've taken medication, you're not ovulating regularly. So we need to know that you have, and the only way to know that sometimes is to monitor you, because some people you can't tell with the labs. And then the last thing that's really important for you is to remember that if you're doing injectable medications, so the Gonalef and the Menopure and the stuff like that, it is definitely really, really important for you to make sure that you absolutely are being monitored. You cannot just take shots of Gonalef and Menopure 
and decide that you are going to actually end up being okay without monitoring because that is going to very rapidly turn you into Octomom. And I uh, don't want to be on my own TV show because I created eight babies and one lady. So uh, definitely do not do that. You have to be monitored when you're taking the shots. It's critical. So there are exceptions. This is not a one size fits all or a one shoe fits all scenario, but you do need to be cautious and definitely don't go back for months of natural cycle monitoring at any clinic because that's just totally a waste of your time. Okay, so um, I want to make sure that you guys like, subscribe, and comment on the video. Uh, we are super excited to do these for you. It is very important that we make sure that uh, you get the feedback to us. 